Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. How's life treating you? Eh, life's life. <laughs> uh, exciting things at the hospital? Uh, um, define exciting. You have a case yet? Uh, well, I can definitely say that we finally started getting results, but they are ironically not the results that we originally sent. What do you mean by that? So the the testing company that we originally sent with has basically stopped all testing because they're so overwhelmed. They can't keep up with demand. So they like shut their doors to more testing. We, well, you know what I was reading about the testing is like it has a shelf life, right? Like once you take that nasal swab, you're like you're, the time's ticking before you can't test that anymore. Well, it's I don't know what it is. If it's, you know, hopefully greater than 10 days because that's no, it's not because that's what we're looking at right now. So we started getting tests because we have finally got the FDA to approve a machine they put at one of my facilities hospitals. So not my hospital, but one of our like system level hospitals. And they started sending the tests over there as of like yesterday. And they start, we started getting results back from that because it's a much quicker turnaround. So we do have results, but they're not of those original ones we've been waiting for. for I see. So know, the ones you do have results days. for, um, are those people? Uh, I, I can say that there's, there's many, many, many negatives, but they're not all negatives. Uh, okay. Okay. So what do you do when the when you do get a when you when you get a positive back and I'm assuming those people I'm assuming anyone that's been tested was told to go home and self quarantine, right? No, no, there's a lot of them still in the hospital. There's a lot oh, of them okay. that are still not in the hospital though. So yes, there's a lot of self quarantining ones and I don't know what we're gonna do about those when they start coming back because I didn't look at the the breakdown to see like who the results came back on, if they were still in house or if they were out of house or whatnot. But the thing is, like, you know, once we start getting results back on these people who've been waiting for 10 plus days, apparently what I'm being, what I'm understanding is after about 14 days, even if you're positive, that's when you should be negative again, as long as you're alive. So does it really even matter at this point? What do you, what do you mean by what you just said? What you just said doesn't really make any so sense. So from what I'm told is when you're positive... Like, cause here's the deal. Like you're, it, you're supposed to quarantine if you think you've come into contact with it for 14 days. Right. And you're showing symptoms and all that stuff. Like quarantine for 14 days to make sure you're not, you know, contagious. Uh huh. But what about if you are positive, when are you allowed to go back into society? Well, it's more than 14 days. The, the shit lasts longer than that. Uh, what I'm hearing is about 14 days. I don't know. Like if you if you have it, like there's lots of people that have like a fever that lasts more than four weeks. Uh, I haven't heard that details of it. So this is still like unknown territory, I guess, for me to know what it is. But how long is it until you're waiting for these results? Like when does a positive result finally come back that you're like that result matters not at all anymore? Um. Like, that's the question is how long for this, these ones that we've been waiting for from this outside place, we sent people home to quarantine. We have results that have been waiting for 10 days at this point. When do you get a result that's positive and you go, "Uh, who the fuck cares? I mean, if those people still feel sick, then they have it, right? I I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't have that information. Well, they do. I can tell you. I'm now the, the official source. Official if they still are sick, they can still spread it. If they have a fever, they can still spread it. Even if they don't have a fever, they can still spread it. So true. But what if they don't have a fever? And like, so when's the point? When is the point of like, are you going to, if it's somebody you knew was positive for this thing that we will not speak its name for demonization purposes. You can say it. You just can't put it in your title. Shh, we just won't say it. And then we can manual review. Fuck you, manual reviewer. Because, you know. Well, now you done done it. <laughs> the uh, But when do you look at that and say, okay, you're fine. You can go back in society. Well, the truth is society is shut down. So there's nowhere to go anyways. Okay. So when is the appropriate time? Once you're well. So what what is the definition of well? Some of these people are asymptomatic shedders without even feeling the brunt of any problems. Sure. So right. what is I mean, well? I I mean, again, I guess that's why we're shutting everything down, right? Sure, sure. But have we talked about this next stage? 
Um, I mean, it depends on who you mean by we. Like, the Imperial (laughs) College of London has talked about what the next stage is like, and you don't want to hear what they've had to say. Uh, Months and months and months. 18 months. Yeah, I I saw saw those news articles today. My hospitals talked about the next stage, apparently, behind closed doors and claim that they have this all whole plan put into place. But it's not allowed to get to the level of where I'm at at the hospital. I mean, if what every again, like the Imperial College, if, if the things that I am reading make and they make sense to me are true, then there is no there's nothing we can do until there is a vaccine. Basically, until there's a vaccine, we need to all maintain social distancing and maintain a pretty much shut down life until there is a vaccine and we can create that herd immunity. And I'm, because I'm sure that there's a big truth to that. But if that's the case, like, I don't know that the economy and those sort of things can survive that sort of a shutdown. I well, also agree with that. So. So, like, where do you go from the person who can't pay rent right now? What are they supposed to do? I don't know. I have no idea. That's what I keep talking about. I mean, just like the bill that was passed that's supposed to help people that um, are getting sent home on sick leave. And this is not people that are. I mean, a lot of states are trying their best to to deal with the unemployment issue by changing the unemployment rules in terms of like who can file for unemployment. But like, I don't know. I don't I don't know how we recover from this, honestly. Like it, it does seem like a hill that's just one we'll never be able to get the ball up to the top of. Like it seems very, very awful <laughs> right now. I, I don't know. Like, what do you think? I, I, I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea what they're going to do with like this. as a landlord. Well, and th- so that's the funny thing is so I guess the uh, so uh, we're not only a landlord to the person that lives below us that you know. But my wife owns two other properties. One of them right, right now is empty, but one of them in Pennsylvania has renters. And right. I guess they uh, emailed her two or three days or text messaged her two or three days ago and just said a very like generic statement of something about the like, what if we're not going to be able to pay rent this month? And I guess there are two people who work in like the restaurant industry and um, one, one's a waitress and the other one is like, I don't know if he's one of the chefs there or what. Um, and, mm-hmm. and her response back was kind of laughing. And she said like, LOL, you don't owe me like money until this whole thing is, you know, really is over. Well, but at the same time, it's, it, we're talking like, you know, a $900 a month, you know, rental. We're not talking like a, a huge expense. That's like basically thing. your wife was just like. You go ahead and keep twenty thousand. Well, well, and she said that we, we hadn't talked about it or anything, but I don't disagree with the statement that she made with this. Apparently, they wrote back immediately, uh, not immediately, but a couple of minutes later, and said something like, "My wife and I are both crying right now. Thank you so much," because they were apparently freaking out because they didn't know how they were going to pay rent. Sure. And I mean, they there's were... a lot of people and there's not a lot of people like your wife that are going to be like, you know what? I don't need twenty thousand dollars. Just keep it because a lot of these landlords, well, were, you know, I mean, well, and that, this is and, and, that's, income, and right? that's the ironic thing. So I was thinking about it and I'm like, we have the neighbor, the the, the tenant that lives downstairs. I would mm. love to be able to text her and just be like, hey, you don't owe us any rents until this is all over. But the mortgage company is not going to do that for me. Exactly. And exactly. so I don't know how do you deal with that piece of it? Right. That's kind of what my question was, you know, I I, because I knew that you were still paying a mortgage on, you know, where you live in the downstairs. So, like, y'all still got to pay. Yeah. So you can't just be like, live for free, you know? Yeah. Well, so if they come out with some government and that's where it gets really crazy, too, if they come out with some government stipend of we'll give you, you know, this much money toward your mortgage because of whatever. What does that do for people? Who are landlords and what, how, how do you enforce something like that of, if I'm going to pay for part of your mortgage, you all of a sudden don't charge your tenant right now. And can you do that? How do you mm. enforce that? It's such a weird situation because you know, they're good. The government's going to have to come out with something at some point, right? 
Are they? They're, they're going to have to. Are they? they? They have to. Do they? I, <laughs> <laughs> and guys, welcome to the episode. They have to. <laughs> Uh, but really, though, I mean, no, absolutely, I they have to. Come on, we're, they we're, don't. The, epi- the episode's gone. Then you say, "Are they?" Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I don't know how they do that, and um, like it's very complicating to me. It's very complex because, like, well, if you're going to, it, gonna just, it absolutely is complex. I mean. It's it's like it's way more complex than like anything else the government really has ever done to me. Like you can't just give everyone in the United like whatever Andrew Yang was running for president and he was running with the platform of a universal basic income of a thousand dollars a month. Everyone was like that shit crazy because you just can't give everyone in the government. Isn't, isn't that States. exactly what Trump just said to give everybody a thousand dollars for like, it stuff. is, it is basically they took Yang. I mean, it's, it's funny how progressive we become in an emergency. Um, but that's not sustainable. Like sure. We could do it for a month or two, but not forever. And that's why like Yang's platform was kind of like, how are you going to pay? Like, at least, at least whenever Yang was running for president and had this as part of his platform, he had ways to pay for it because he was going to restructure the government in a way to make this thing work. We're not doing that. We're just like, oh, we're going to shit some money and give it out to everybody, basically. And, like, how is it being paid for? And also, there's no qualifications here. You're just basically saying everyone gets $1,000. That includes people like Bill Gates. He's only $1,000. He's fine. Are you sure he's okay? Am I sure he's fine? Like he he might be hurt, you know. He might whole, be. This whole that thousand might thing. save him. It might. So, it might actually pull him out of off the 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 edge. He might be about to jump, and you're gonna be like, <laughs> "Mr. Gates, here you go," and he'll be like, "Wow, thank you." I mean, basically, as liberal as I am, I'm against giving everyone a thousand dollars. I would like a thousand dollars, sure, um, but I think that there needs to be some kind of logic behind how we're handing this money. Out. I, I think and randomly it, giving everybody a thousand dollars does zero for anybody. Well, do you remember when Bush did this? Bush gave everyone $600 back in the day. Did it? Yeah. Wasn't if, it like in some form of a tax break of some type? Right. So, so like, the, so there was a Futurama this, episode if, that was absolutely about this. It was the $300 tax return that everybody got. So there, all of a sudden all these stores started popping up like, the 99 cent store turned into the 299.99 store because it was like, how do you spend your $300 taxes? Right. And everybody, the whole episode was about like Lilo was going to swim with a whale. Fry decided he was going to drink 100 cups of coffee for $3 a piece, which was amazing, by the way. Like, the episode was a fantastic episode, but it was interesting to see like a random tax break of X number of dollars all of a sudden made people think that they were fucking millionaires for some odd reason like it didn't make any sense in the world right and i kind of that's kind of what i'm getting at here if you give people this money like it's not going to solve the issue it's not going to magically stimulate the economy it's not going to i mean a thousand dollars doesn't pay most people's fucking mortgage so like what are you gonna do with a thousand dollars a thousand dollars would pay for 60 percent or i'm sorry 60% 60% of that $1,000 would go just back into my health insurance payment for the month. So, like, now I'm left with $400, and what am I supposed to do with that? Go buy some groceries at the empty grocery store? Like, I don't I don't see how that $1,000 saves anybody. Like, that, if you if you can live off of $1,000 a month, like, uh, it just, uh, no, I'm just no, so frustrated. I'm, I'm absolutely with you, and that's why when I heard the thousand dollars a month or a thousand dollars for everybody, I was just like, I don't understand what this is supposed to do. Because honestly, if you don't give people the thousand dollars, they're gonna be. I, I can't say they're gonna be just fine. I think giving people randomly out of nowhere a chunk of money helps zero people in any process. Like I'm sure. Sh- like, because if you went and gave everybody, let's even pretend it was like a more substantial amount of money. I'm going to give everybody in America $10,000. $10,000 is much more substantial. People are going to be like, wow, that'll pay like multiple months of my mortgage and things like that. Sounds good on the surface, right? Mm-hmm. You can't tell me if everybody gets the exact same quote unquote advantage 
that it doesn't somehow negate out to some problems. What do you mean by that? I just, because everybody has the exact same thing. And we're talking everybody. We're not talking a select few of like poor people. We're talking everybody gets the same thing. All of a sudden it becomes like nobody got anything. I don't understand what you mean by this. I'm sorry. I'm hoping some people who are watching like understand what I mean. But it, well, <laughs> I mean, if you give everyone ten thousand dollars, you said your words are if you give everyone ten thousand dollars, it's like giving everyone nothing. Is what you said? Yes, and that's a oversimplification because clearly, you know, you're not giving you're not giving the big banks and stuff the banks as a, as an entity. $10,000 and $10,000 means less to, you know, a billionaire like Bill Gates than it does to, you know, a poor person, you know, like, oh my God, I just ruined this whole fucking thing down here and didn't even think about it. When did you ruin? Uh, I started doing that netherrack like thing. Yeah. And uh, I was doing all this fire and apparently the fire I put caught the edges on fire. The things oh, that we did God, all that work no. did not catch on fire. And uh, there's fire. Oh yeah, I guess that is a problem. I didn't even like think about. I didn't even think it would catch those edges if they were. Oh Jesus Christ! If they were uh, covered the way that they were, if they were like walls all the way up, like yeah. they are, I didn't think it'd catch them. But man, it's fucking just fire spreading. It's fire spreading randomly too. It's like just skipping over blocks. Yeah, it does that. Jesus. Luckily, I only did it in a corner with the glowstone. So now that I have holes in this stuff, I don't have to worry about the lava behind. All of a sudden, catching it was just this glowstone area, right? But now we got some um, shitty looking, shitty looking shit. I mean, if if like if this thing lasts, you know, eighteen months, then it needs to be a hell of a lot more than oh, ten thousand dollars in the end. But I, but I still want to get back to. Oh god damn it! No, this one's lava. This one's lava. No. Oh god damn! It. I don't even know how to how to address this right now. <laughs> Because we gotta we gotta fill in all these gaps with something too uh, on the lava ones. Oh yeah, because it's gonna burn up otherwise. Yeah. Oh god, they just keep it, it keeps catching on the bottom. I can't, I can't get ahead of it. Uh, I'm nowhere near there. I would help you. I'm trying to fill some gaps in right now, real quick. Uh, oh god, the fence is even apparently. Woo. Okay, I think I got that filled in for the time being. I'm sure people were getting tired of hearing all the Corona talk. We did manage to do an hour of podcast today <laughs> without talking about it at all. I mean, it's possible to do. It's just, especially with you and I's like what we talk about. It's very. Oh no! I mean, with you working in the medical industry, like it's interesting to me uh, to hear what it's like from and, your perspective. And there's so much more that I could talk about with my industry right now that I, I, I'm so afraid to even get into for fear of being fired because I am so upset at certain things that are happening in my industry right now. I'm sure everyone in the medical industry is having a hard time. Like, um, I mean, I don't know. Uh, what, what are y'all doing about childcare? Cause aren't both of you considered like required well, employees? Well, sure. But so the nice thing is my, uh, my wife's not, she's not in uh word. She doesn't work for the government. She works for uh, something that you would think is it. Uh, is required though and essential because it's like she works for the the public health services. Oh, so any public health agency that's out there is under mm -hmm. the purview of where she works. So you would think that they're they're essential and they are essential, but they don't. They're they're now work from home because they don't have to be essential at a place. I see. So she's been she got work from home starting on Wednesday, uh, is what they implemented there. Her grand or her parents have been in all week. And he, her parents want to actually take uh, her and the kids back to Ohio uh, sometime this weekend because, for one, her dad, like, is still, you know, after all the cancer scare and all that stuff, he still has back problems and he's way more comfortable at his house. So he wants to go back home. And now that she's on work right. from home, they want to take all the kids and stuff there, which I'm okay with. I'm stuck here because I still have to go into into the office but are you not worried about getting separated and then like the nation shutting down and you're not being able to reconnect uh you know honestly it might be best for us right now because like we i said the other day of anybody who's more who's susceptible to get in contact with it at this point it's me if anybody in our family gets it it's going to be me 
So, so can they go there and basically hunker down? It would be better for them to go there and hunker down. And I do. Her parents, I think, are very actually concerned about that. They're concerned that they're going to catch this. For, oh, my God. Another one is on fire. Uh, but, yes, they are concerned they're going to catch this thing from me because they, they're worried that I'm in a position where I'm going to get it. And, right. Uh, and they so are like, the boomer generation. So, you know, it's uh, yeah. they're the ones that's you got to worry about with this stuff. So... <laughs> I mean, I wasn't super worried until I read about all the long term. So I and risks. I still and we talked about that the other day. I still haven't substantiated that that is is a legitimate problem. Well, I mean, the the studies that that have, it's not just one like you're not coming from one source. The problem is there's not enough time passed to see how long this is a thing. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe these people are seeing reduced uh, lung function, but maybe that'll clear up in six months or something like that. But it, we don't have six months yet to know that to be the case. Um, so maybe maybe it's not as bad of, as it looks right now, but it could be. Um, I mean, there's things that could be insane that we don't even, you know, fathom. Like there's there's things that could come from this that you don't you're not thinking about. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, sure. Um future health risks like it could increase your chance of getting cancer or something lung cancer um who knows you know um hopefully not but good um so yeah like i mean i'm concerned now we talked talk a little bit before the episode started but uh crystal's work um she works for a bank which is high risk because you're touching money and interacting with customers um so she has a high risk job and so you know like and, you know, she's with her working all the time and, you know, we're five days a week and the school's closing. We basically just agreed that our daughter would stay here uh, for the time being, like until things kind of panned out. But then after like, you know, being not, not even a full week of that, um, we're still like in my normal schedule to have her period. Um, I guess she started getting more worried that like this could last months and months and months. And so she doesn't want to go that long without seeing her daughter, which I can understand, but I'm still not. I'm still not on her side here because, like, I think that it's a huge – so anyways, uh, the, to, for me, before I go on to my concerns, um, so, you know, she's – she's next as of next week, her bank is letting her off on the weeks that she's supposed to have her daughter, so she'll be able to get her come, come Monday or whatever. But to me, this is just awful, not because I – you know, my daughter's not going to be here because, to be fair, like, I need to be able to work longer than I am. So, I mean, I could be doing long streams and making money while there's still money to be made. That sort of thing, because I mean, I'm worried about you, you know, think this industry is more well. of a risk that she's going to catch it and then bring it back to you. Absolutely. Yeah. Like and that's the problem with the incubation time is so like she can go to Crystal's house. Everybody thinks they're all well. She comes back over here with the virus again. Everyone thinks they're all well. And, you know, then a few days later, then, you know, no one's well anymore because um, there's no way to know that, you know, she's carrying it. Um, so, you know, I'm definitely not a big fan of this change and. Part of me is considering, like, maybe I should tell her, all right, if you want to do this switch, you're going to have to keep her until this situation is resolved um, because I'm, but, a, I, but, I'm a no-risk house, you know? Uh, I'm trying to think about – yeah, that would – so you're worried about you getting it now, though? Well, yeah. I mean, again, the reason we, I know it sounds like I've done a whole 180 on this where I'm going on a cruise. I'm, now so, I'm, I'm sorry, dude. You're not allowed to change your mind ever in life. Um, That's the way it is. <laughs> but the you made a statement why, once. You stick by <laughs> yeah. it. I'm booking you on another Disney cruise that leaves tomorrow. You will go. You will <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, at this point, the way things have changed, if even if Disney wasn't canceled, I'd be canceling. I wouldn't be going on this cruise regardless at this point. Um but that's just because the way that I see everything has changed now. Like, like I said, like I'm more worried about long-term effects and that sort of thing than I was whenever this stuff was early, you know, early on. And maybe I should have been more worried back then. Cause you know, it's a new thing. We don't know what we don't know. Um, don't worry. But whatever. I have to go to a mandatory leadership meeting tomorrow with a 240 person invite in person. There's no way that's against the I, fucking government's uh, regulations. So how many, how big of a gathering can even be? I, I, I was ever kidding. Well, just don't go. I well, I don't. I'm not going to go. But I also had very long discussions with very high up executive leadership in my hospital about said said item and why that it should never happen and why it should be canceled. And my uh, concerns were taken and told that they are still going to hold the meeting. Do they not? 
I mean, I guess those recommendations by the CDC are only that recommendations. They're not law that you cannot hold a gathering of more than 10 people. But are you on the main island? No. Well, yes, I'm on the pyramid. Trying to oh, make no, sure I meant the main out. the main island. Someone just flew past. Me. I guess it was Ryu. Oh. Um, I'm going around stealing things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that island. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. I need cactus, so I'm not stealing anything of high value, but I've been looking for cactus. I finally found some. Um, so I don't know. It, it. You would think that in the medical industry, you would follow the guidelines of the Ooh. CDC before anyone else. One would think. I'm very disappointed at a lot of the medical industry at this point. I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, I understand why you're upset. I don't understand why they're just ignoring those guidelines I and holding a 250-person meeting. I also do not. That's why I had a very long conversation with a very high-level executive person today that after two days of discussion, I, I said today, I need to have a meeting with you about this because it's there, there, we, there's a problem. Absolutely. Like that... You need to like blow a whistle or something. I don't know. I don't know what people do nowadays. But... I already have. It's, it's no. I mean, it's... like, I don't even know. Like, you need to like call the. Well, the problem is that there's, there's a certain point where people consider certain things mission critical, and my whole point was trying to convince them that this is a something you should absolutely have virtual if you still think it's critical. Especially yeah. without guidance of what it is to anybody. It's just, this is a mandatory meeting. Have to be it there. Like, I need more information. And at first it was a, if you really feel uncomfortable, I will excuse you with, I will excuse anybody who wants with, they have to contact me directly to now it's, if you don't want to go, don't go. And that's what's going to happen. I mean, it never should have ever been a man. Like I said, call call the news. <laughs> Don't have to call the news. It'll be done and over before this episode airs, and it'll be like determined on how mission critical it is and what it is. And yeah, but, but there'll but, be a lot more people but, that are leaving there sick, right? Well, well, so that's where I have the biggest problem. Is I, I just think it's there's a weird cross between there's places trying to do the right thing, but also trying to show that they really are supporting the people who are stuck in these jobs where like in hospitals where you're stuck doing the things that are making you more at risk. But there's a point of, of we're supporting you as much as we can. And we are there to step in for you when you, need us to because you are now like sick or quarantined or what what not and then there's a, a point of idiocy of we just are we're going so hard in one direction to try to prove our our loyalty to you as a good as our employee and a good person that we're trying to show how much we are there for you to where it's a like a negatively impacting others and that's yeah. where it's like lost at is there's not a they can't figure out where that line is and they're making wrong decisions in my mind about about that i mean to some degree i feel like each day the reaction escalates only because well now what are we going to do what are we supposed to be doing today like we had yesterday we closed well, we went from like all the we went from restaurants like eight thousand like to give people context we went from like eight thousand cases yesterday to thirteen thousand today and that's just because we have testing. I'm True. sure we have sure, yeah, oh yeah. 100,000. Yeah, guaranteed. You know? but, but that shows where this is about to go as test results start to come in. Um, yeah, I don't know. Where are we at? I'm trying to look at where we're at right now. Oh, yeah. 13,678 as of this. And our numbers just look ex exponential growth. They've they've made the dots on the COVID map smaller. What they've done is they've before it was like they had to scale them down because I think it was covering it too much with red when you zoomed out. <laughs> just yeah, I guess that's true. Um, I noticed in the United States before it was like dots per major city, and now it's just dots per state. So like, there's not like one dot in Raleigh and one dot in Charlotte for my state. It's like just North Carolina dot. Oh, you know I guess mean? I always looked at Washington D.C. anyway, which is you know a quote unquote state, ah, right? <laughs> right. So, ah. uh, well, uh, what do you think about? So what do? You, <laughs> what? I don't even know. We we probably should 
bring this episode into the I mean bring this quite this conversation to the next episode at this point. Um I guess people are probably like I said tired of us talking about this, but But they're still quarantined while they're watching this, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um all right Suckers. folks. We'll see you next time. See ya.